Welcome back for another edition of the WinBig Sports Talk and Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Gabriel Shry. Thank you for tuning in. You can also find us at WBSNSports.com for up-to-the-minute highlights, rumors, and sports news. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at WBSN Sports. You can find us on Spotify, Anchor FM, WBSNSports.com, 105.3 Power Radio, and 96.9 Fresh Air Radio. To listen to the podcast, you can watch on WBSNSports.com or cut out the middleman and head right to our YouTube channel. Okay, so last week for college football, I went 1-1. One one. I thought Michigan would beat TCU. They're, uh, they're in the semifinal. I was wrong. I'm okay with that. I accept that. Puts me at 162 and 42 on the season, picking college football games. Hopefully, I finish 163 and 42. Coming up on Monday, it's January 9th, 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch the game on ESPN and stream it via the ESPN app. It's the Georgia Bulldogs and the TCU Horn Frogs. Only one game remaining in the 2022 college football season. And it's a big one. Monday night, the number one Georgia Bulldogs, the defending national champions, facing off against the number three TCU Horned Frogs in the college football playoff national championship inside of SoFi Stadium. The Horned Frogs have been the Cinderella story of the season, and it's sure to be an exciting matchup for folks around the nation. The Dogs are no stranger to the national championship stage. They will be competing for their third title game in the past six years alone. Georgia was widely considered one of the top contenders in the SEC, CFP, and national title at the beginning of this season. On the other hand, TCU and the Horned Frogs have surprised many by making it to the championship game as they were not expected to be in this position. In fact, they weren't even picked to win their conference. The Frogs went five and seven last season, Preseason expectations, they were picked to finish seventh under first-year coach Sonny Dykes in the Big 12. Despite suffering a close loss to Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game, TCU managed to earn that spot in the college football playoff with an undefeated record. In the Fiesta Bowl semifinal, the Frogs faced number two Michigan as heavy underdogs, but pulled off a shocking 51-45 victory against the national champion, Now, TCU will have one final opportunity to make a Cinderella run and defy expectations by defeating the Georgia Bulldogs in the title game. Will TCU become the biggest surprise champion of the modern age, or will Georgia restore order and become the first program to win consecutive national titles since Alabama did in 2010 and 2011? On paper, I'll admit, it's very difficult to bet against TCU. There have been a lot of times this season where I've kind of thought to myself, this is it. This is where the magical ride comes to an end for the Horned Frogs, but I've been wrong each time. And, and believe me, I'm not looking for reasons to write off TCU. I love underdogs. No one could have predicted that TCU would have made it all the way to the national championship game. And while it was expected that the Horned Frogs could potentially cause some big upsets in the Big 12, few could have imagined they would make it this far. From a pure power rating standpoint, George is the favorite. There's no doubt about it. But TCU has consistently defied expectations throughout the course of this season, and I'm going to have a hard time betting against them now that they've made it this far. There are some concerns about how well TCU will be able to match up against Georgia in this game. One major factor will be the availability of Georgia's tight end, Darnell Washington. He's a highly talented pass catcher if you haven't seen him play, but also a formidable blocker in the run game, and his presence would be a challenge for TCU's 3-3-5 defense, which is more vulnerable to teams that use two tight end sets. If Georgia has both, both Washington and Brock Bowers available for the game, it could be a difficult problem for the Horn Frogs to solve. Michigan faced similar challenges in the Fiesta Bowl after losing Luke Schoonmaker, and they were already short staff at that tight end position. On the other side, this Georgia defense is nowhere near as dominant as last year's team. This is especially true when it comes to quarterback. TCU's Max Dugan is often the worst enemy when taking sacks, but we've seen Georgia's secondary struggle against good passing attacks this season. TCU may not have Ohio State's overall depth at receiver, but Quentin Johnson, Darius Davis, and Tay Barber are a strong trio. I don't know that the TCU defense gets enough stops to win this game, but offensively, 
the Frogs could put up enough points to keep things respectable at the bare minimum. My score pick in this one, absolute high-flying shootout, a nail-biter on Monday in the national title game, 41-34, to Georgia and the Bulldogs coming up with a victory in the 2023 national championship. Let you know, let me know rather, what do you think? Is that the right pick? Do you think TCU is going to pull off the miracle? Uh, is my score pick good, 41-34? I want to know what you think. I think it's going to be a great game either way. I'm excited for it. NFL football. There's never enough NFL football in our lives, right? This season, I am 97 and 43 picking games. I've been about 50 50 every week. I had a great week eight, uh, went 11 and four. Last week, I picked 13 and one. So I got 13 of my 14 picks right, which is like by far the best I've done. Most weeks, I've split the difference. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. So. Excited to uh, get into our picks for this uh, this final week of the NFL season. First game, we're going to talk about Chiefs at Raiders. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Watch it on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. Kansas City, the favorite. What to watch for. Jarrett Stidham's first ever NFL start against the 49ers. Top-rated defense was a one-off. Chiefs have some game film on him. That's that's the prediction of many experts. I don't know. I, I think he could continue that success, but the Chiefs are not the team you want to play against uh, for your second ever game. Patrick Mahomes and Stidham probably going to put up a lot of yards. Um, I would be surprised to see Stidham fall off that heavily, but you know, it's one of those things that's very hard to tell. So the Chiefs are still waiting on how seeding will officially be determined for the number one seed. They've already secured the AFC West title. The Raiders have been eliminated and are projected to land the number seven draft pick in April. So could be interesting. My score pick in this one, 32-24, Kansas City Chiefs win the ball game. Tennessee Titans at Jacksonville Jaguars, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick on Sunday. Watch it on ESPN, ABC, ESPN+. Plus. The winner of this one takes the AFC South title, while the loser almost certainly misses the playoffs. These teams are streaking in opposite directions. The Jaguars have won four in a row, and the Titans have lost six straight. Titans are starting journeyman quarterback Joshua Dobbs, Tennessee boy right there, played a long time behind Ben Roethlisberger up in the Steel City in Pittsburgh. The Jaguars have Trevor Lawrence, who leads the league in completion percentage since November began. The Titans are probably going to score at least 21, 24 points. That's what I think. Um, Lawrence needs 99 yards to become the third 4,000-yard passer in Jags history. That's definitely going to be happening, so... Uh, the Titans would be eliminated with a loss, but the Jags can still make the playoffs if they failed to win Saturday. Jacksonville would need losses from the Patriots, Dolphins, and Steelers. So, could be interesting. My pick in this one, 27-20, Tennessee Titans pull off the victory. Patriots at Bills, New England and Buffalo, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick on Sunday. Watch it on CBS. Well, Tamar Hamlin is probably going to have a big impact on this one. And you know, the whole sports world will have their eyes turned towards this game, towards Buffalo, and uh, thinking of Tamar Hamlin. So it's a win and in scenario for the New England Patriots and the final wild card spot, which is on the line. But I don't know. Emotional week. Can they take down that Bills team that's all fired up in the wake of Hamlin's collapse? It's going to be a tough one. Damian Harris. Uh, could break out this week just because of the way this Bills defense is stacked, especially that run defense. They're 13th in the NFL in average yards allowed per carry at 4.3. His return from a four-game absence due to a thigh injury was an important boost for New England, so I think they're going to try to work him in. Quick stat for you, the Bills could match the franchise record for the most wins in a season 13. They did it in 1990, 1991, and last season. The Patriots are playing for the playoffs. They need a win to clinch the final AFC wildcard spot, but they also can make it with a loss as long as the Finns and Steelers lose and Jacksonville wins. My goodness, witching hour is really here. What fun is this? My pick for this one, the Bills win it and stave off New England 28-19. to We'll see if I'm right. Minnesota Vikings at Chicago Bears. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Watch it on Fox. Minnesota, the big favorite. Justin Fields, second NFL season, has ended 64 yards shy 
of the single season quarterback rushing record after he was ruled out against Minnesota with that hip injury. Nathan Peterman will start for Chicago and the Bears. The NFC number two seed is still in play for the Vikings so long as they win at Soldier Field and the 49ers lose to the Cardinals. Kirk Cousins is tied with Dak Prescott and Derek Carr for the league lead and in interceptions, but he's had a pretty good season overall. The Vikings are locked in as NFC North champs, but do not have a shot at the number one seed. They are most likely to be the third seed, setting up a wild card matchup with the Giants of New York. The Bears have been eliminated, but are right in the mix for the number one draft pick, so it could be interesting. My pick, obviously, going to be the Vikings in this one. 28 to 10 is my score prediction. Bears really struggled last week against Detroit and the Lions. Houston Texans at Indianapolis Colts. Boy, these are some some shady boys. This is a rough season for these guys. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Watch it on CBS. Colts are a two and a half point favorite. Um, Texans would own the number one overall draft choice if the season ended today, but that could change with a win. Um, stats to know the Colts are currently on a six game losing streak, their longest losing streak since 2017, five years ago. Both teams were eliminated from the playoffs, but there is something big on the line. The Texans could get the number one draft pick for April if they lose or if the Bears beat the Vikings. Could be interesting. My pick in this one, going to go with the Colts. The shoe wins 20 to 13. New York Jets at Miami Dolphins, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Watch it on Fox. The favorite is Miami by two and a half points. The all-time regular season series between the teams is tied at 56, 56 and one. So the Jets not only could take the series lead with a win on Saturday, but they could also secure their first season sweep of the Dolphins since 2015. Interestingly enough, the Jets have never beaten who had tagged Viola, but will not have faced him in either of these teams' matchups this season as Skylar Thompson is expected to start for the Dolphins on Sunday. The Dolphins have lost five straight games since an 8-3 and three start and are hoping to avoid ending the season with six straight losses for the first time in franchise history. The Jets might be eliminated, projected to pick at number 13 in the draft, but the Dolphins still have a lot to play for in Week 18. They need a win, and the Patriots lost to clinch the final AFC playoff spot. They are definitely rooting against New England this weekend. My score pick in this one, the Jets win 31-27 and a little bit of a nail-biter. Just a little bit. Carolina, the Panthers at the New Orleans Saints. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. You can watch that one on Fox. New Orleans and the Saints are the favorite. That's why I'm picking them. Saints coach Dennis Allen has been firm about not making major challenge changes to the lineup with no chance of reaching the playoffs, but injuries could tweak that a bit. First round pick Trevor Penning could get his first start at left tackle in place of James Hurst and rookie cornerback Alante Taylor could get back into the starting lineup due to Paulson and Debo's hamstring injury after playing no defensive snaps last week. Panthers receiver DJ Moore is 122 receiving yards away from a fourth straight 1,000-yard receiving season. I think he'll be looking for that. He'll be calling for the ball. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Eight of New Orleans' past nine games have gone under the total, including five straight. Carolina has gone over the total in four straight games. The past four meetings between these teams went under the total. Now that one of these teams are going to make the playoffs, hate to see it. New Orleans Saints going to win this one. As you can see, 28-24, my score pick. We'll see if it comes true. Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Tune in on Fox. Falcons are a four-point favorite. What to watch for? Tom Brady's never lost to the Falcons in his career. 10-0 in the regular season, 1-0 in the postseason. Of course, everyone remembers that Super Bowl. Should Brady start Sunday, he'll have a chance to extend that streak. Atlanta hasn't beaten Tampa Bay since 2019 and hasn't won at home against the Buccaneers since October of 2018. Brady has 477 completions this season and is nine shy of breaking the single season completions record, which he set himself last season. The Bucs are in as NFC South champs and will be the number four seed in the playoffs. The Falcons are eliminated and looking at the number eight spot in the draft right now. My pick, Atlanta Falcons win it 23 to 17. 
Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. What a fun game this is going to be. It's a 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick on Sunday. The lights are on. It's a big-time matchup on CBS, and Pitt is a a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Fueling the Steelers' late surge is a clutch rookie quarterback and a turnover-happy defense for the Browns on an easy win. The offense turned in its best performance since Deshaun Watson's return last week thanks to Watson's three touchdown passes, Amari Cooper's 105 receiving yards, and Nick Chubb's 104 rushing yards. Kenny Pickett has delivered so far in the clutch to keep the playoff hopes of Pittsburgh alive, and yet again, he's going to have a chance to do that this week. Najee Harris is 46 rushing yards shy of a second consecutive 1,000-yard season to start his NFL career. He had 1,200 yards last season. He would be the first player in franchise history to rush for 1,000 yards in each of his first two seasons. And think about the running backs they've had in Pittsburgh, the bus. Franco Harris, pretty incredible company there alongside him. Pittsburgh can still make the playoffs, but it needs help. It would need to win and see losses from the Patriots of New England and the Dolphins of Miami. My pick in this one, Pittsburgh Steelers win it in clutch time, of course. A late score from Kenny Pickin in the offense, 27 to 21. We'll see if I'm right. Don't bet with me on that one. I'm picking against every expert in America. The Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time pick. Watch it on CBS. Cincinnati is a seven-point favorite. The stakes of this game were a bit unclear early in the week, but the Bengals are now AFC North champions. Cincinnati had a much tougher schedule than Baltimore, which has been without quarterback Lamar Jackson down the stretch and lost three of its past six games. We could see a rematch of these two teams in the wild card round. What's at stake? Both teams are in. Bengals are the champs. Cincinnati might still be alive for the number one seed in the conference. We'll see. My pick, Cincy wins 27-13. Sorry, Ravens. Dallas Cowboys and Washington Commanders. The boys have been great this year. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. You can watch it on Fox. The boys are a seven-point favorite. One touchdown. Washington's going to start Sam Howell, the eighth different starter in Coach Ron Rivera's three seasons, and the 33rd to start for the franchise since it last won the Super Bowl after the 91 season. He'll face the NFL's 10th-ranked pass defense. That's no joke, which has recorded the third-most sacks and is tied for the sixth-most interceptions. Sam, I'm thinking of you, bud. Hang in there. Hang in there. Washington's in. Dallas is... No, I'm sorry. Washington's out. Dallas is in. Uh, still in contention for the NFC East in the conference. is number one seed. A win and an Eagles loss clinches the division title and an additional 49ers loss. But also hand the Cowboys the first round bye in the playoffs. It'd be interesting. I'm going with them boys. 33-17, my score pick in that one. New York Giants at Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles have also had a fantastic season. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Find it on your television set on the CBS television channel. Philly's a 14-point favorite. That's crazy. All eyes are on Jalen Hurts. Will he play for the first time since December 18th? If not, Gardner Minshew will be back for a third straight week. The stash in the saddle again. The Giants are locked in to the number six seed, meaning they have the opportunity to rest key starters if they so choose. A.J. Brown, nine receiving yards, shy of breaking the Eagles' single-season record set by Mike Quick back in 83, 1,409 yards. That's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm definitely picking the Eagles in this one. My score pick, 28-20. to So I'm not giving them the spread, but I think they'll definitely win. Los Angeles Rams at Seattle Seahawks, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kick, watch it on Fox. Seahawks are the favorite. Seahawks need a win to keep their playoff hopes alive, but before beating the Jets last week, the Hawks had lost five of their past six. The Rams are the only team they beat during that stretch, and the Hawks needed a late Geno Smith touchdown drive to do it. They haven't missed the playoffs in consecutive seasons under Pete Carroll. So this would be the first time they did that if that were to happen. If that were to happen. ESPN says Seattle has a little over a 20% chance to make the playoffs. The Seahawks need to win and then have the Lions beat the Packers on Sunday night. The Rams are out. 
They don't have a great pick. It is what it is for them. My pick in this one, I'm picking the LA Rams in a close one, 23-22. We'll see if I'm right. Los Angeles Chargers, Denver Broncos, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Watch it on CBS. Denver's the favorite. Keep an eye on which Chargers lineup takes the field against the Broncos. L.A. could have its playoff seed locked in by kickoff, and if that's the case, some starters might rest. Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson, who's on track for a career low in TD passes, already has a career high in sacks, has a better chance of ending the season on a high note. My pick in this one is going to be the Chargers bolt up 23 19 Cardinals at 49ers, 4.30 p.m. Kick Eastern Standard Time on Fox. San Fran's a 14-point favorite. The NFC West champion Niners still have an outside shot at the number one seed in the conference. They need to win and see the Eagles lose. I don't know. I'm definitely going with the Niners, though. No question. My score pick in this one, 35-17. Big win for San Francisco. Detroit Lions at Green Bay Packers. Oh, boy. What a game. 8.20 8.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kick. Watch it on NBC. Last time these two teams played, the Lions picked off A-Rod three times. Only four other times in his career has he been picked off that many times in one game. Lately, it's been the Packers' defense that has been producing takeaways. It has eight in the past two games and 12 total in the current four-game winning streak. Both the Packers and the Lions lost five straight at one point this season. The winner of this game could become one of the rare teams to lose five plus straight games and still recover to make the postseason in the National Football League. Oh boy. If the Packers win, they clinch a playoff spot. If the Lions win, they don't make it unless Seattle loses earlier in the day. My pick in this one, Detroit and the Lions win the football game 27-23. We'll see what happens. That's all I got for you for this week. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Win Big Sports Talk Sports Betting Podcast. Be sure to follow us at WBSN Sports. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can find us on Spotify, Anchor FM. Visit our website, WBSN Sports. Dot com. All audio and WBSN visuals are copyright and property of One Big Sports. This podcast will be archived across all platforms. I'm Gabriel Shry, host of the Win Big Sports podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.